Please welcome Joost Oppels. Welcome, astronauts of Spaceship Earth. That's the theme of these talks, TEDx Arnhem. It was also the most favorite line of my late husband, Wilbur Ockels. He was an astronaut and he went to space in 1985 on board of Space Shuttle Challenger. And he used this line, astronaut of Spaceship Earth, in almost all his speeches. And he wanted it, after his space experience, to draw the attention of all of you, to give the message, the most important message, that he thought that our future should be a sustainable future. That's the only choice we have to make. And you know, even on the last day of his life, he broadcasted the message on television, and he once again asked us to use his space experience to get the message across that you have to uh, adapt the attitude of an astronaut, to think like an astronaut, because in his mind, that was how we would love the Earth and how we could make this Earth more sustainable. So what's the attitude of an astronaut? Well, you know, actually, it's all about getting your spaceship in an optimal condition. And it means you have to work, you have to train, and you have to prepare yourself to the most important thing, and that's the danger of space. So what it's all about, it's about maintenance, it's about responsibility, it's about taking care, and it's about discipline. All to do so because of the dangers of space. And space is dangerous. It's dark, it's cold, sometimes terrible hot, there's no air to breathe. You can't live there. There's no nothing. Weber said it's like death. And once you're in space, well, then you finally can see and you can look back at Earth. And they all tell it's a wonderful picture, Earth. Because when you look back, you know that down there on Earth, that's where your family is, that's where your friends are, and that's where everything is, what is important. That's where history is, and that's also the only place where there is a future. So, you want to take care. And, of course, you see above Earth this tiny little thin layer of atmosphere. And you're amazed by the fact that that's the only protection everyone on Earth has for all the dangers of space. <coughs> There's nothing else. It's just that tiny layer of atmosphere to protect us. And of course, when you're in your spaceship, you work. You do your experiments and you do your research. And pretty soon you find out that space is not the place for a human being. We are not made for space. Our body, our has been evolved on Earth, in an Earth's gravity environment. That's where we belong. I mean, in space, no gravity. What to do with your limbs? What to do with your bones and your muscles? No balance, no orientation. Everything is upside down. No Earth and day rhythm. That's no place for a human being. We adapt but we not made it for it. We really Earth-made. So if you take those three aspects, the danger of space, the beauty of Earth, and the realization that you're very human-made, that's when emotion sets in. 
That's when people, astronauts, really all talk about how precious this Earth is. It's pure emotion. And the first time, well, I talked with quite some astronauts and I read a lot of stories and they all talk about it in the sense that the first time they really um, experienced it was actually Apollo 8. Apollo 8 was the first mission to the moon, December 1968, Christmas. Apollo 8 was the first mission to go around the moon, away from Earth. And it was the first time people with their own eyes, with pictures of course, saw the backside of the moon. You can't imagine, but we have never seen that at that time. Anyhow, it also was a nervous time because when the astronauts were on the backside of the moon, there was no communication. So there was silence. And once they came back, finally, from behind the moon, they took a picture, the astronauts on board. And that was this picture. It's the first picture of our planet as a planet. We didn't have a picture like that. And for the astronauts, they were flabbergasted because they, for the first time, saw Earth rise above the surface of the moon. Can you imagine what an emotion that is? Seeing our Earth, our home, as a planet in the darkness, floating in space. And nowhere is there a spare. We are all alone. That's where we are. It gave people, I guess, a new sense of self-awareness. A new sense also of what our limitations are. That's us. That's the only planet we have a future in. Well, now, I guess you can imagine why Wilbo wanted us to be an astronaut. Because he thought that when you become an astronaut, you also would have the attitude of a crew member, of taking care of that thing. Because if you're a crew member and you train like that, as they did, they know how to take care. They know how to take their responsibility. And so he wanted us to have that attitude, to take care and feel responsible for our home planet. And how? Well, you know, we all know, we have to stop that burning of fossil fuels get rid of it. We have to stop polluting the Earth atmosphere. We have to start recycling all the stuff we have. We have to. It's the only way there will be a future. And you know, you can take small steps and you can bi take big steps as long as all these steps are going in the right direction in the direction of a sustainability, sustainable Earth, and really take global warming serious. And you know what the nice thing is? Once you do that, you receive positive energy. You will receive happy energy. When I started a foundation, he wears the sweater all the time. Because it was the really idea that you can work also on sustainability as long as you have this happy energy feeling because you know it's in the right direction. And we made a logo out of it, this logo. Happy planet, happy future, and happy energy. And you know, if you go in that direction, you will eventually change our culture too. Because in the end, we will be in line with our DNA because we are so Earth-made. I wish all of you lots and lots of happy energy. Thank you. <laughs>